the political theorist Hannah Arendt is best known for her monumental work, The Origins of Totalitarianism. However, she also published a, a couple of very controversial works. Um, the best known of those is probably her 1963 book, um, Eichmann in Jerusalem, in which she coined the phrase, the banality of evil. Um, it was controversial for her argue, for acceptance of Eichmann's claims that he was simply a cog in the machine going along with the uh, plans of the, the Holocaust um, and for her criticisms of, uh, of the Jewish councils. I think probably uh, Arendt was wrong in accepting these claims, but the idea of the banality of evil was very useful. Um, but I want to concentrate now on an earlier and less known controversial work. That is her 1959 article, Reflections on Little Rock. In this article, um, Aaron considered the situation of uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, in which uh, the federal government had decided to enforce the 1954 and 1955 Brown decisions um, regarding the uh, integration of American public schools. Um, Aaron was struck by the image of a young student being accompanied to um, the Little Rock Central High School uh, with um, uh, uh, white um, hate mongers gathered around her, screaming curses at her. And one of the things that, uh, that affected Arendt was the image of this young woman having to undergo this. And Arendt was concerned that children were being placed at the forefront of a struggle that really was the realm of adults, that is to achieve uh, greater justice and equality in American society. But she also made a um, deeper argument based on her distinction of the private, the public, and the social in human life. Um, the private is the realm of our, our own individual lives, our homes where we can live as we choose. The public is the realm of the public, of the, of, of the political, where we um, share our lives with others. Uh, and the social is an intermingling of the two. And she argued that in the public realm, equality, more specifically equality of rights, is the rule that should pertain, that we should maintain uh, political equality for all individuals, regardless of race, ethnicity, background. In the private realm, though, we should be able to carry on our lives as we choose. The social, she argued, is where the public and the private overlap in our um, connections with other people, our interactions with others. And she maintained that while equality is the rule in the public realm, discrimination is the rule in the social realm because as private individuals, we have the right to choose with whom we interact or by extension with whom our family members will interact. And she maintained that the federal government by attempting to enforce the integration of a public school was violating the rights of parents to decide with whom their children should attend school. 
Now, I think actually that she was wrong in her classification of public schools as part of the realm of the social. Uh, public schools are, of course, public institutions. They're funded by taxpayer money. Uh, and uh, I think that in a political institution, like a public school, that there is a genuine interest in enforcing a rule of equality as opposed to allowing discrimination. So I think uh, that Arendt was, was actually wrong in her classification of public schools as purely social entities, and that she was wrong in this case in, in criticizing the federal government for enforcing the rights of individuals, i.e., in this case, black individuals, to attend a public school, a political institution guided by elected officials and funded with their taxpayer money. Um, and this touches on, I think, an, a fundamental element of liberal democracy. Liberal democracy entails two elements. One of those is liberal and the other is the, the democratic element. The democratic part means that the public, however constituted, has the right to make decisions about um, political affairs, about how we spend our money, about uh, what kind of policies government will enact. The liberal part means that there are spheres of our lives that no government can impinge upon, including democratic governments. A, a uh, democratic government that can exercise complete control over private lives is essentially a majoritarian tyranny. So uh, a liberal democracy has to include both a public realm and a private or social realm. But I would argue that these have to be distinct, that if we don't have respect for the private realm and for the right of individuals in the social realm to interact with whom they choose, i.e. to discriminate, then we undermine one of the very basic principles of liberal democracy, and that is that individuals have the right to carry on their lives as they choose and to think as they choose, including in ways that I might think are wrong, including ways that I might think are prejudicial or um, unfair within their own houses and in their own friendship groups, they can carry on their lives as they choose. And if they feel prejudice, I can disapprove of those prejudices. I can uh, argue with them if uh, we get into a conversation and try to talk them out of them but I can't forbid them to have those prejudices, nor can I tell them with whom they have to interact. Now, I can tell them that they can't say who can go to public schools or not, because these are public and political areas that are funded by public money and that um, the right of other individuals implies that they should be able to go to the public schools in their area without discrimination. So, you know, I would think that um, Arendt was wrong in her application of this public private social distinction specifically to public schools. But it's a really useful and interesting distinction. And I think it does raise the question of how we apply this, um, since it does imply that there are areas of social life in which we may discriminate and areas of life in which we may not discriminate. Um, 
By extension, we can't discriminate against public schools. Well, we can't discriminate in other politically funded uh, parts of life, like, uh, for example, in um, forms of employment in the public sphere or in businesses that do business, the businesses that um, interact in business transactions with the government. Uh, we have to maintain a principle of non-discrimination in order to respect the equality of all individuals in the public realm. But there is this question of where do we have the right to discriminate? Clearly, we have um, the, the right to invite into our homes whomever we choose, to make friends with whomever we choose for whatever reason we choose, and to violate that right is a violation of one of the basic and foundational principles of liberal democracy, the right of individuals to choose for themselves and to live their own lives. Um, now, where it becomes interesting, where it becomes, I think, interesting and also problematic is in quasi-public spheres. Uh, if government can forbid discrimination in government employment, how about in other areas of employment or other areas of life? Now, there are some fuzzy places here. I think one of those might be, say, for example, large corporations. I would tend to argue, and uh, you can disagree with me on this, that a publicly traded corporation is a quasi-public entity and that therefore government has a legitimate right to intervene and to forbid racial discrimination, discrimination on the basis of sexual preference, uh, discrimination on the part of religious belief. But I would say that a privately owned business, especially a business that is owned by a single individual, is an example of social life. That is where individuals interact with other individuals. Now, this puts me at odds with a great deal of how anti-discrimination legislation is currently enacted. One of the questions that has come before the American courts recently has to do with the right of businesses to refuse to do uh, business with um, groups of people that for some reason they disagree with, especially on religious grounds. In particular, uh, the right of say bakers to refuse to supply cakes to same-sex couples. If I were a baker, I'd sell a cake to anybody who wanted to buy a cake from me. I also don't have any religious grounds that I would object to um, same-sex couples getting married or, or buying cakes from me. However, I would argue on the grounds of an individual right to free association within the social realm that people who own their own businesses have a right to choose with whom they will sell cakes or, or other items to uh, on, on any grounds that they, that, they, um, that they think are fit. If these are religious grounds, then so be it. If these are grounds of purely personal prejudice, then so be it. Um, when we think about it, every person has the right to purchase items from whatever business that person thinks is appropriate. Uh, if I want to buy food from Chick-fil-A, I actually don't think I've ever eaten at Chick-fil-A, but if I want to buy a, a sandwich from Chick-fil-A, then I have the right to do that. If I object to Chick-fil-A's position on a social issue, then I have the right 
not to buy a, a sandwich from Chick-fil-A. Um, but to enforce anti-discrimination against privately owned businesses is essentially to say that the purchaser can choose with whom she or he will interact, but that the seller has no right to choose with whom she or he will interact. Uh, which seems to me like uh, a bizarre and one-sided violation of the rights of, of personal association. Now, this, you know, actually puts me at odds, I think, with not only many of the liberal arguments about anti-discrimination legislation, but also with a lot of the conservative arguments about anti-discrimination legislation, since the latter tend to focus on a religious exception to legislation discrimination. Uh, I would argue that the person who decides not to sell a cake to someone because of religious beliefs has that right, not specifically because of their religious belief, but because it's their store. It belongs to them. They can choose with whom they will do business and with whom they will not do business. And if I object to that and want to criticize them, that's my right. If I want to tell all of my friends, don't go to that store because that store acts in ways that I consider prejudicial, I have the way, right to do that also. And, and to me, this seems like the right application of Ernst's application of the public, the social, and the private and a way that is consistent with what I would consider to be the fundamental principles of liberal democracy. Now, many of the things I've said here um, might um, uh, have entailed um, arguments that people would disagree with. Uh, if you disagree with me, and you know, I'd be happy to, to, to hear that in the comments below or anywhere else, uh, provided that the disagreements are based on reason and logic and not um, anger and outrage and other kinds of expression that I would consider not um, consistent with um, rational discourse. Uh, so if you've watched this, thank you for watching it. And I appreciate uh, your um, attention. And I uh, have pasted below uh, the link to Aaron's article.